Johann Joachim Winkelmann was a German art historian and archaeologist. He was a pioneering Hellenist who first articulated the difference between Greek, Greco-Roman and Roman art, the prophet and founding hero of modern archaeology. Winkelmann was one of the founders of scientific archaeology and first applied the categories of style on a large, systematic basis to the history of art. Many consider him the father of the discipline of art history. His would be the decisive influence on the rise of the neoclassical movement during the late 18th century. His writings influence not only a new science of archaeology and art history but Western painting, sculpture, literature and even philosophy. Winkelmann's History of Ancient Art was one of the first books written in German to become a classic of European literature. His subsequent influence on Lessing, Herder, Goethe, Holdlin, Heine, Nietzsche, George, and Spengler has been provocatively called the tyranny of Greece over Germany. Today, Humboldt University of Berlin's Winkelmann Institute is dedicated to the study of classical archaeology. Winkelmann was homosexual and open homoeroticism and formed his writings on aesthetics. This was recognized by his contemporaries, such as Goethe. Biography Early life Winkelmann was born in poverty in Stendhal in the Margravia of Brandenburg. His father, Martin Winkelmann, worked as a cobbler, while his mother, Anna Maria Meyer, was the daughter of a weaver. Winkelmann's early years were full of hardship, but his academic interests pushed him forward. Later in Rome, when he had become a famous scholar, he wrote, One gets spoiled here, but God owed me this, in my youth I suffer too much. Winkelmann attended the Kolnisches Gymnasium in Berlin and the Altstaatisches Gymnasium at Salzwedel, and in 1738, at age 21, went as a student of theology to the University of Halle. However, Winkelmann was no theologian, he had become interested in Greek classics in his youth but soon realized that the teachers in Halle could not satisfy his intellectual interests in this field. He nonetheless devoted himself privately to Greek art and literature and followed the lectures of Alexander Gottlieb Baumgarten, who coined the term aesthetics. With the intention of becoming a physician, in 1740 Winkelmann attended medical classes at Jena. He also taught languages. From 1743 to 1748, he was the deputy headmaster of the gymnasium of Seehausen in the Altmark but Winkelmann felt that work with children was not his true calling. Moreover, his means were insufficient. His salary was so low that he had to rely on his students' parents for free meals. He was thus obliged to accept a tutorship near Magdeburg. While tutor for the powerful Lamprecht family, he fell into unrequited love with the handsome Lamprecht's son. This was one of a series of such loves throughout his life. His enthusiasm for the male form excited Winkelmann's budding admiration of ancient Greek and Roman sculpture. Von Bunnell's librarian in 1748, Winkelmann wrote to Count Heinrich von Bunnell, Little value is set on Greek literature, to which I have devoted myself so far as I could penetrate, when good books are so scarce and expensive. In the same year, Winkelmann was appointed secretary of von Bunnell's library at Nudnitz, near Dresden. The library contained some 40,000 volumes. Winkelmann had read Homer, Herodotus, Sophocles, Xenophon, and Plato, but he found at Nuthernitz the works of such famous Enlightenment writers as Voltaire and Montesquieu. To leave behind the Spartan atmosphere of Prussia came as a great relief for him. Winkelmann's major duty involved assisting von Bunnell in writing a book on the Holy Roman Empire and helping collect material for it. The treasures there, nevertheless, awakened in Winkelmann an intense interest in art, which was deepened by his association with various artists, particularly the painter Adam Friedrich Oeser, Goethe's future friend and influence, who encouraged Winkelmann in his aesthetic studies. In 1755, Winkelmann published his Gedanken über die Naschermung der griechischen Worker in der Malerei und Bildhauer Kunst followed by a feigned attack on the work and a defense of its principles, ostensibly by an impartial critic. 
The Gedanken contains the first statement of the doctrines he afterwards developed, the ideal of noble simplicity and quiet grandeur, and the definitive assertion, t, he one way for us to become great, perhaps inimitable, is by imitating the ancients. The work won warm admiration not only for the ideas it contained, but for its literary style. It made Winkelmann famous, and was reprinted several times and soon translated into French. In England, Winkelmann's views stirred discussion in the 1760s and 1770s, although it was limited to artistic circles. Henry Fuseli's translation of Reflections on the Painting and Sculpture of the Greeks was published in 1765, but the text did not find enough readers to warrant a second edition. Rome in 1751, the papal nuncio and Winkelmann's future employer, Alberico Archinto, visited Navnitz, and in 1754 Winkelmann joined the Roman Catholic Church. Goethe concluded that Winkelmann was a pagan, but his conversion ultimately opened the doors of the papal library to him. On the strength of the Gedanken über die Naschemung der griechischen Worker, Augustus III, King of Poland and Elector of Saxony, granted him a pension of 200 thalers, so that he could continue his studies in Rome. Winkelmann arrived in Rome in November 1755. His first task there was to describe the statues in the Cortile del Belvedere, the Apollo Belvedere, the Laocoon, the so-called Antonus, and the Belvedere Torso, which represented to him the utmost perfection of ancient sculpture. Originally, Winkelmann planned to stay in Italy only two years with the help of the grant from Dresden, but the outbreak of the Seven Years' War changed his plans. He was named librarian to Cardinal Passioni, who was impressed by Winkelmann's beautiful Greek writing. Winkelmann also became librarian to Cardinal Archinto, and received much kindness from Cardinal Passioni. After their deaths, Winkelmann was hired as librarian in the house of Alessandro Cardinal Albani, who was forming his magnificent collection of antiquities in the villa at Porta Salaria. With the aid of his new friend, the painter Anton Raphael Mengs, with whom he first lived in Rome, Winkelmann devoted himself to the study of Roman antiquities and gradually acquired an unrivaled knowledge of ancient art. Winkelmann's method of careful observation allowed him to identify Roman copies of Greek art. Something that was unusual at that time, Roman culture was considered the ultimate achievement of antiquity. His friend Mengs became the channel through which Winkelmann's ideas were realized in art and spread around Europe. Neoclassical artists attempted to revive the spirit as well as the forms of ancient Greece and Rome. Mengs's contribution in this was considerable. He was widely regarded as the greatest living painter of his day. The French painter Jacques-Louis David met Mengs in Rome and was introduced through him to the artistic theories of Winkelmann. Earlier, while in Rome, Winkelmann met the Scottish architect Robert Adam, whom he influenced to become a leading proponent of neoclassicism in architecture. Winkelmann's ideals were later popularized in England through the reproductions of Josiah Wedgwood's Etruria Factory. In 1760, Winkelmann's description des Pierres Graves du Fou Baron de Stoche appeared, followed in 1762 by his Anmerkung an Uber die Baukunst der Alten, which included an account of the temples at Pistum. In 1758 and 1762, he visited Naples to observe the archaeological excavations being conducted at Pompeii and Herculaneum. Despite his association with Albany, Winkelmann steered clear of the shady world of art dealing which had compromised the scholarly respectability of such brilliant, if much less systematic antiquarians as Francesco Ficaroni and the Baron Stosch. Winkelmann's poverty may have played a part. The trade in antiquities was an expensive and speculative game. In 1763, with Albany's advocacy, he was appointed Clement XIII as a prefect of antiquities. 
from 1763. While retaining his position with Albany, Winkelmann worked as a prefect of antiquities and scripture of the Vatican. Winkelmann visited Naples again, in 1765 and 1767, and wrote for the use of the electoral prince and princess of Saxony his briefer and Bianconi, which were published, eleven years after his death, in the Antologia Romana. Winkelmann contributed various essays to the Bibliothek der Skonen and Wissenschaften, and, in 1766, published his Versu China Allegory. Of much greater importance was the work entitled Monumenta Antici in Editor, prefaced by a trattato preliminaire, which presented a general sketch of the history of art. The plates in this work are representations of objects which had either been falsely explained or not explained at all. Winkelmann's explanations were of tremendous use to the future science of archaeology by showing through observational method that the ultimate sources of inspiration of many works of art supposed to be connected with Roman history, were to be found in Homer. Masterwork Winkelmann's masterpiece, The Geschichte der Kunst des Altertums, published in 1764 was soon recognized as a permanent contribution to European literature. In this work, Winkelmann's most significant and lasting achievement was to produce a thorough, comprehensive and lucid chronological account of all antique art, including that of the Egyptians and Etruscans. This was the first work to define, in the art of a civilization in organic growth, maturity, and decline. Here, it included the revelatory tale told by a civilization's art and artifacts. These, if we look closely, tell us their own story of cultural factors, such as climate, freedom, and craft. Winkelmann sets forth both the history of Greek art and of Greece. He presents a glowing picture of the political, social, and intellectual conditions which he believed tended to foster creative activity in ancient Greece. The fundamental idea of Winkelmann's artistic theories are that the end of art is beauty, and that this end can be attained only when individual and characteristic features are strictly subordinated to an artist's general scheme. The true artist, selecting from nature the phenomena suited to his purpose and combining them through the exercise of his imagination, creates an ideal type in which normal proportions are maintained and particular parts, such as muscles and veins, are not permitted to break the harmony of the general outlines. Death in 1768 Winkelmann journeyed north over the Alps, but the Tyrol depressed him and he decided to return to Italy. However, his friend, the sculptor and restorer Bartolomeo Cavaseppi managed to persuade him to travel to Munich and Vienna, where he was received with honor by Maria Theresa. On his way back, he was murdered in Trieste on 8 June 1768, in a hotel bed by a fellow traveler, a man named Francesco Archangeli. For medals that Maria Theresa had given him, Archangeli had thought that he was only un uomo di poco conto. Archangeli was executed a month later by breaking on the wheel. Winkelmann was buried in the churchyard of Trieste Cathedral. Domenico Rossetti and Cesare Panini documented the last week of Winkelmann's life. Heinrich Alexander Stoll translated the Italian document the so-called Mordak the Winkelmann, into German. Critical response and influence. Winkelmann's writings are key to understanding the modern European discovery of ancient Greece, neoclassicism, and the doctrine of art as imitation. The mimetic character of art that imitates but does not simply copy, as Winkelmann restated it, is central to any interpretation of Enlightenment classical idealism. Winkelmann stands at an early stage of the transformation of taste in the late 18th century. Winkelmann's study Sent Schreiben von den Herculanischen Entdeckungen was published in 1762, and two years later Nachrichten von den Neuesten Herculanischen Entdeckungen. From these, scholars obtained their first real information about the excavations at Pompeii. His major work, Geschichte der Kunst des Altertums, deeply influenced contemporary views of the superiority of Greek art. 
It was translated into French in 1766 and later into English and Italian. In the historical portions of his writings, Winkelmann used not only the works of art he himself had studied but the scattered notices on the subject to be found in ancient writers, and his wide knowledge and active imagination enabled him to offer many fruitful suggestions as to periods about which he had little direct information. To the still existing works of art, he applied a minute empirical scrutiny. Many of his conclusions, based on inadequate evidence of Roman copies, would be modified or reversed by subsequent researches. Nonetheless, the further descriptive enthusiasm of passages in his work, its strong and yet graceful style, and its vivid descriptions of works of art gave it a most immediate appeal. It marked an epoch by indicating the spirit in which the study of Greek art and of ancient civilization should be approached and the methods by which investigators might hope to attain solid results. To Winkelmann's contemporaries it came as a revelation, and it exercised a profound influence on the best minds of the age. It was read with intense interest by Lessing, who found in the earliest of Winkelmann's works the starting point for his Leia Kuhn, and by Herder, Goethe and Kant. Works the most accessible edition of selected works, in condensed forms, is David Irwin, Winkleman. Selected Writings on Art 1972, the critical edition is Walther Raymond Helmuth Sichterman, Eds, Kleiner Schriften, Voriden, Entworfen, 1968. Gedanken über die Nasche der Griechischen Werke in der Malerei und Bildhauerkunst, followed by a feigned attack on the work and a defense of its principles, nominally by an impartial critic. Description des Pierres Graves du Fieu Baron des Doche, and Merkung and Uber die Baukunst der Alten, including an account of the temples at Pistum, Sentschreiben von den Herculanischen Entdeckungen, an epistolary essay addressed to Friedrich Rudolf von Berg, Nachrichten von den Neusten Herculanischen Entdeckungen, Geschichte der Kunst des Alterthums, Versu China Allegory, which, although containing the results of much thought and reading, is not conceived in a thoroughly critical spirit. Monumenta Antici in Editor, prefaced by a tratato preliminaire, presenting a general sketch of the history of art. The plates in this work are representations of objects which had either been falsely explained or not explained at all. Briefer and Bianconi, which were published 11 years after his death, in the Antologia Romana.